EWTN. EWTN has played a critical role in my life. Having served in the Marines, I've traveled throughout the world, and EWTN was always with me. Having spent a majority of my life in non-Christian countries, EWTN provided me with the strength to persevere. I am forever in debt to Mother Angelica and EWTN. This is just one of the many testimonials we receive every day here at EWTN. Your donation helps bring a message of hope to the world. To help support Mother's mission, go to EWTN.com, then click Donate, or send your donation to EWTN, 5817 Old Leeds Road, Irondale, Alabama, 35210. Please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for EWTN's benefactors. O oh good and provident Father in heaven, we thank you for inspiring so many to support the work of EWTN throughout the years. You are never outdone in generosity. We ask you to bless all of those who have contributed to EWTN. Grant them 100-fold in return, bless their undertakings, and assist them in their needs. Give them even more abundantly gifts of the Spirit, so that they may grow in holiness and receive the everlasting reward of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. human heart lies open, every desire speaks plainly, and from whom no secret is hidden. Cleanse, we pray, the thoughts of our heart by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that we may merit to love you perfectly and offer you worthy praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your nature. For just as you presented the parts of your bodies as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness for lawlessness, so now present them as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were freed from righteousness. But what profit did you get then from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit that you have leads to sanctification, and its end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life 
In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Verbum Domini. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father a mother against her daughter, and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Verbum Domini. We welcome every year Father Baudiga, a venerable priest of the Archdiocese of Hartford, Connecticut, great friend of Mother Angelica through the years. We welcome you, Father. You're always welcome here. I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. I thought it was appropriate to offer a vote of Mass of the Holy Spirit today because of the readings of setting the world on fire. When words like fire, water, dirt, etc. are used in sacred scripture, there is always a deeper meaning behind these words. What does Jesus mean by setting the world on fire? Fire can do many things. Fire can destroy. Fire can heat up elements. We can get near a scorching fire 
and we immediately feel its effects. We end up backing away unless we are a curious child. Can remember my brother getting near heat, especially he used to love to climb. And when he would climb the stove, the burner had just been on. And I can remember him pushing up on the stove and the sound that he made, <laughs> just getting burned. Sometimes we know what it's like to be burned, to get near fire. But maybe we have not been burned physically. Perhaps we have been burned by another person. Maybe we've all had these types of burns in our lives. Maybe not a first second or third degree burn on our skin, but perhaps the burn we experience is from rejection in our lives, manipulation, lying, bullying, and maybe the worst burn perhaps that people experience is infidelity in a marriage. These types of burns leave scars and effects far more worse than any physical burn that we can have on our skins. These burns leave marks that are in our souls. And these burns need to be healed too, even more so than a burn on our skin. Fire also has the capacity to purify. When a piece of iron is put into a burning furnace, the iron is heated up to a point where it can be molded, where it can be shaped, where it can be sculpted. And without that fire, the iron remains just a cold piece of immovable iron putting that fire, getting near the fire, makes the iron, makes the piece of metal bendable, makes it moldable. And it's the same with us. Apply this analogy to how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. When we allow the Holy Spirit to, to take possession of our hearts, there are many imperfections that need to be purified. Countless times in sacred scripture, the image of fire is used as purification. Purification from what? Purification from our weaknesses. Purification from our own sins. Sanctifying grace, that is the life of God within us, and sinfulness, our weaknesses, cannot coexist. One must go. And it's the life of God within us that purifies us and enables us to overcome our weaknesses. And it's hopefully by the cooperation of the Holy Spirit and the action of his breath in our lives that this fire of God's Spirit can take reign over our hearts, can take possession of our lives. The Lord desires that our hearts be set on fire. In the Old Testament, the scribes and the Pharisees observed the law but without the love of God in their hearts. God the Son became flesh in order to show us the perfection of charity. A Pharisee asked Jesus, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law 
and the prophets. Jesus Christ, God the Son, did not merely talk and teach about the great commandment of the love of God and love of neighbor, but he came down to show us exactly how to put this into practice. He became himself a holocaust. He became himself the supreme example of the love of God and the model of how we are to love. What image do you think of in the Old Testament when fire is proposed? Perhaps the burning bush. The burning bush that was not consumed. If you would set a bush on fire, if one of our young people here would go out and set a bush on fire, or somebody flicked a cigarette or something in our, in our bushes, it would set on fire. And it would become very quickly consumed. The unconsumed burning bush teaches us about the fire of God's love. That God's love for us is this unconsuming fire. Christ came to reveal that the, his Father's love for us and to send the Holy Spirit among us to set our hearts on fire. The unconsumed burning bush points to what God desires to do with it, each one of us within our hearts. And by drawing near to the fire of God's love, we are purified and our wounds are cleaned. The Lord appeared to a very simple nun in the 1600s in France, Pere Le Monia, and he came to reveal to this very simple nun his love for us. He came to reveal that his love, his heart, is like a burning fire. His heart is on fire for us, like an unconsumed fire, very much like the burning bush. And this is how we are to approach our Lord in his heart that's set on fire for us. Not in a way where when we touch it like a, a burner, we're gonna get burned by our Lord, but the closer we get to our Lord and his love for us, when we bring those things of our lives, those burns in our lives, those scars, the scars of, again, rejection, the scars of being lied to, the scars of being maybe bullied, the scars of infidelity. When we come near the fire of God's love for us, those wounds are healed. It's the fire of God's love for us that heals those wounds not again wounds on the skin, but wounds that go deep down into our souls, into our even our emotions, into our minds, our psyche, every, every single last aspect of the human personality. Christ came to heal. Throughout the pontificate of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, he used imagery and the expression that every Christian is called to have a personal Pentecost. That the same Holy Spirit that descended upon the apostles and the Blessed Virgin Mary in the upper room is the same Holy Spirit that we receive in our baptism. The same Holy Spirit that descended upon the apostles and the Blessed Virgin Mary in tongues of fire is the same Holy Spirit that descended upon each one of you 
at your baptisms and still continues to descend upon you to this day. That is when we receive the sacrament of confirmation, every time we receive the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, we receive sanctifying grace, God's life within us. When we go to the sacrament of penance and make a very good, heartfelt, sincere, contrite confession, that fire of God's love is ignited within us. The same Holy Spirit. Saying that we are called to experience a, a per personal Pentecost takes what happened 2,000 years ago and applies it to ourselves, personalizes it. God desires that our hearts be set on fire with his love and ultimately that we love as he loves. He gives us his own love, his own heart, the sacraments that we experience. He gives us his own love that we can love with his love. The Holy Spirit dwelling within us makes this possible. St. Catherine of Siena once said, if you are who what you, what you are created to be, you would set the whole world on fire. If you are what you are, sh rather, she says, if you are what you should be, you would set the whole world on fire. What we should be. That is set on fire by God's love. If only we would elect let God accomplish what he desires to do through us. St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta was once asked by a reporter, Mother, what do you see as the greatest obstacle to your work in furthering the work of the missionaries of charity? And she was very quick in answering this question. What do you see as the biggest obstacle to your work and to extending the mission of the Missionaries of Charity? What was her answer? I know you know. She said, me. Me. I'm the biggest obstacle. I'm the biggest obstacle from letting the reign of God, from letting the Holy Spirit work in my life. It's the same thing with each one of us. We become the biggest obstacles to letting the life of faith grow within us, to letting the Holy Spirit reign within our hearts. Not other people, not other circumstances in the world around us, but us. We're the biggest obstacles that are preventing the Holy Spirit from working in and through us. If only we would stop being the obstacle. If only we would just get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit ignite us and purify our hearts and also purify all of those burns all of those wounds in our lives that they too are even the obstacles that are preventing us from giving our lives to God. And what good would be accomplished in the world today if every Christian, every one of us t today here, and those watching via television, listening through radio, would really pray for their own personal Pentecost to pray that the light of the Holy Spirit may set their hearts on fire. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. 
O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same spirit to be truly wise and ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ has entered heaven to appear before God now on our behalf with confidence we offer the sacrifice of our prayers. That our Holy Father and his fellow bishops may find us attuned to their call to follow with faith, encourage the path on which the Good Shepherd leads. We pray to the Lord. Lord for our brothers and sisters imprisoned or suffering for the name of Christ, that the Lord be present to them and give them the freedom of the children of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord that God, who commands us not to kill, may strengthen the efforts of all his people to end abortion. We pray to the Lord. Lord that many young men and women will open their hearts to serving the Lord and the priesthood in the consecrated life. We pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, that they may soon be with the Lord in paradise. We pray to the Lord. Father, we adore, praise, and give thanks to you for giving us the sacred heart of Jesus. We now offer our own hearts to you, asking that you purify them, sanctify them, and make them like unto the heart of your only begotten Son. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the spiritual sacrifice placed on your altar with loving devotion, and give your servants a right spirit, so that their faith may make these gifts pleasing to you, and their humility come in them, through Christ our Lord. Dominos vobiscum, et vos fieri ut sum cor ha ha. Amen. Grazias agamus, Domino Deo nostro. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you bestow gifts suited to every season and guide the governing of your church in wonderful ways. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you come unfailingly to her aid, so that with a heart always open, always subject to you, she may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble, nor cease to give you thanks in time of joy through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognize in the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will, to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis and St. Clair, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your holy father, with your servant, our holy father Francis, our archbishop, our bishop Robert, and, and the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Jean Morris, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, es ti video patri omnipotenti, in unitate spiritu sancti. Omnes ohonore gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Pre chapter salutaribus moniti et divina institutione formati, audehemus dicere. Amen. 
Da propitius pacem in the evos nostris, ut opimis recordia tria duti, et abacato simos sempre vivedi, et ab omni patibatione seguri, expectantes piatum spem, et aventum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. Qui amatum estrengum et Domine Jesu Christe, qui didixi apostolis tuis, pacem alenquo vobis, pacem meam no vobis, nera speeches patata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tuae, eam quae secundum voluntatem tuam, pacifric quat quat in ave digneris, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Et cum spiritus Ecce agnus Dei, ecce qui tolet peccata mundi, beate qui ecenum agni vocate sunt. Domine non sum dignus, ut in terris of tectum meni, sed tantum dic verbo, et senavitur anum amea. The Spirit whom I will send you from the Father will glorify me, says the Lord.
For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. O my sweet Saviour, Jesus Christ, Thou art my sovereign good, the fountain of all good, my God and my all. What a blessing it would be for me, could I at this moment possess Thee in my heart, and there render Thee my praise, and lay before Thee my necessities, and share in the graces Thou bestowest on those who really receive Thee. O come to me, dear Lord, in spirit, and take full possession of my heart and of my soul. To thee I give my memory, that thou mayest always dwell in my thoughts, my understanding, that it may ever be engaged in contemplating thy love and goodness, and my will, that thou mayest direct it to the keeping of thy holy law. To thee I give my whole self, O my Jesus. Make me to be ever thine. May the virtue of thy divine sacrament increase my faith, fortify my hope, purify my charity, and fill my heart with thy love. O oh, let me be thine, and thou mine, from henceforth and for ever, and grant that nothing in life or death may ever separate me from thee any more. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord our God, who have been pleased to nourish us with heavenly food, pour, we pray, the delights of your Spirit into the recesses of our heart, that we may, that what we have devoutly received in time, may possess for the gift of eternity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominos Fabisco. Benedica vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Ite hemisas. wrote a scathing letter of correction to the head of the Vatican liturgical office and a new synod might be considering married priests. The papal posse, Robert Royal and Father Gerald Murray, return with analysis. And later, we'll go in the woods 